Hello and welcome to the Uchinga Web Interface version 0.9.1 Beta. My name is Amanda and as your Uchinga tour guide, I'll be taking you through the latest Uchinga web features. Uchinga was once thought of as a simple Nagios fork. A year later, it is far more than that. Beside Postgre and Oracle database support, one of the reasons why Uchinga stands out is thanks to its unique web interface. The web team here with their cronks have made the interface really dynamic so you can assemble a Chinga web however you like it. Okay, now we're in. As you can see, a Chinga web resembles a dashboard with the usual views you'd expect on the left border. These can be brought into view with a drag and drop or by a double click. And at the bottom here, you have the Chinga log, which pops away quite nicely when you need more space in the center as does the left border. At the very top, you can see the tactical overview, so you can check how many hosts are up, how many hosts are down, how your services are going, and have it all in figures as well. At the top left-hand corner, you have an Ajax search function. For those times you can't remember the exact name of the host you're looking for, you can simply type in the first few characters and Achingo offers you some suggestions. Double click on the one that interests you to open it up in more detail. Convenient, huh? The great thing about Achingo Web is that you always have all relevant information in one view. So let's take, for example, the host status view. Here you can see all hosts are arranged in alphabetical order, with information relevant to each host in their row. So for example, you can see that this particular host has services disabled and receives only passive checks. Going further down, you can see a few of these hosts have notifications disabled. And if we keep scrolling, we can see there's still some more hosts available. And you can click onto the next page to view more. In each row for each host, there is an info icon and if you double click on this, you can view the host detail. And if you double click on the history book, you can open up the host history view. Okay, let me show you what makes Achinga really stand out from other web interfaces. Let's take this typical service status view. Here you can see they are all arranged by host with the relevant service details in each line. Now, I want to quickly view all my MySQL services. So I'll go to the serviced field title, click group by this field, and now I can scroll down and find all my MySQL services in one group. Pretty cool, huh? No need to configure a service group in the back end anymore. The user only needs to click around a Jingle web. Alternatively, a shortcut is built in. So if you simply click on the field title, we can now group by all hosts, once again, or probably what's more useful if we group by status. Now for the exciting bit. Here, I can filter my data to view services from perhaps specific hosts which interest me, or services of a certain type, such as web or database, or by status. For today, I'm interested in all services, but I only want to see those that are in trouble. So I will restrict the status to greater than OK, and that should get me a view to show services filtered for just unknown warning or critical statuses. And there you go. Now, I reckon I'm going to need this view in the future, so I'm going to give it a new name. I'm going to right click on the tab, title, click rename, and maybe I'll call it service problems. With this latest version, the team here is built in persistence. So whichever views you build, they are automatically saved. You can refresh, log out, and log in again, and the views in the center block will be there as you left it. In a similar way, we can simply go to the tactical overview to view all critical services as well. Yet another cool little feature is the compound command feature. Say you have a handful of services you want to process checks for. Instead of having to individually visit each service or configure specific groups of services, you can simply go to the service status view, 
tick off the services you want, select the command, today it's process service check result, we're going to pop in the status, type in an output and send it off. If you look to the top right hand corner, the command sent and if we click refresh, ta-da! We have just sent it to multiple unrelated services on different hosts. Convenient, huh? Achiever Web has also improved on the status map to make it more dynamic. Often in larger environments, status maps tend to grow quite complicated and you get a mishmash of lines and icons. So the team here have made it, in effect, dynamic so you can zoom in on areas you want to get more detail on. And on the right hand side, you will have all the relevant host details also available. Even more views can be found here in the left border under a menu with titled miscellaneous. And here you can customize your own tactical overview, which is particularly useful in larger organizations where responsibilities tend to be more specific. And for those times you need to keep track of two issues at once, we have the portal two columns view where you can pull two views beside one another and they resize quite nicely as well. Once again, they remain persistent when you return. One more important area of Achinga Web is in admin. Achinga offers very flexible user settings based on a multi plimpable concept. So let me take you to user admin and today we will edit John Doe's settings. Apart from the usual contact details, you can see to the right here, you can select which group he belongs to and under principle, if you click on add, you can specify which host or service groups that John Doe may view and send commands to or if he's allowed to send commands at all. As you can see, Achinga goes beyond the standard contact group restriction and here with custom variables you can even specify it down to the individual croc which means you can go to the detail of which individual service or host you can view. So let's give it a go. Now I only want John Doe to be able to supervise all hosts from company and I don't want him to be able to send any commands at all. So let's update this, log out and log back in again to check. This kind of detail and flexibility was built into the Chinga so that it could be even more useful in larger corporate environments. And now if we go to host groups, you can see that John Doe can view only host group company one and has no command option available. If we visit service status, we can see we can see that John Doe has only access to services from company one. And even in his tactical overview, there are far fewer hosts to be seen. Not bad, huh? Just by changing a couple of principles in the user admin, all the various UEs have been coordinated in what they display. Okay, that's it. Chinga Web 0.9.1 Beta in a 10 minute video. Check it out for yourself at chinga.org. We have a demo system there called Beta Web or download Chinga itself. Remember, Chinga Web is still in beta phase, so any bugs you come across, please let us know and send us your feedback or suggestions. Now, if you haven't noticed, there's quite a lot of space up here in the menu bar. That space waiting to be filled up with add-ons and other cool modules. So insert the ones you already use or feel free to write some. Team Chinga will be working on it, so stay tuned and we'll catch you around the blog.